Hi there. Thank you for staying after lunch. Uh, so I'm going to talk about changes that are happening in the academia, both globally and here in Israel, and specifically in IDC. And I'm going to cover three sections, and there's going to be an exam. OK? Take notes. Um, OK, so the first section is reasons for change. And, uh, and the first reason is that students' attitude and behavior towards uh, academic studies are negative in many cases. And we didn't invent anything, right? Because uh, everybody listened to The Wall, you know Pink Floyd, you know that uh, we don't need education. Even though I, I, when I prepared myself for this lecture and I looked for some kinds of uh, nice illustrations, I found a nice joke about this one. We don't need uh, no education. And someone said, yes, you do, because you just, you've just used double negative. So you know it's, they're supposed to say uh, we don't need any education. Yeah, but uh, also you, you probably watch this one, uh, Ken, Robins, uh, Ken uh, Robinson. This is the most popular uh, TED Talk ever with uh, 37 million uh, uh, people watching it. Or maybe one frustrated uh, student that watched it 37 million times. <laughs> and uh, actually, this lecture is very, very good. If you didn't have the chance to watch it, please do. I actually uh, consider just playing it instead of talking. But the problem is it's 19 minutes and I only got 15. So you have to get me and not Ted Robinson with his brilliant uh, uh, British accent. But uh, yeah, so he's talking about schools that kill creativity. And he's talking about uh, nowadays schools and, and, and schools in the past. But something is far more radical than what's, what used to happen during the 70s, 80s, 90s. Something is, is uh, uh, truly crazy. Uh, so, for example, this picture from a lecture hall, wherever, it doesn't matter, uh, my, my students or my, my lecture halls, they look the same with uh, uh, students sitting with their laptops. And you had Nava talking uh, just uh, a few minutes ago about the way our minds and our, our brains are plastic and, and are changing. So something uh, very radical is changing with the way we treat reality. And some of you here are sitting with their laptops, so I watch them from the behind. Believe me, they're not taking notes. They're on Facebook. They're answering the emails that they uh, weren't able to answer in the morning or, or yesterday. And uh, also, expectations change. Because if you are part of the digital revolution, and we all are, so things are very, very interesting, and they change very rapidly. So I check the websites that I like. 10 times a day, 15 times a day, and they change 10 times a day, 15 times a day, and things are very, very interesting there. In the classroom, in many cases, it's not that interesting if you're just doing the traditional lectures that we all know. Another thing is that, uh, I don't know if you know this abbreviation, so in English, uh, TLDR, in Hebrew, Amlak, which, is, uh, which stands for, uh, Amlak is Aroch Midai Lo Karati. OK, in English, too long, didn't read. And actually, this is the way people, so there's a reason why we are talking 15 minutes, OK? If we were meeting 10 years ago, 20 years ago, this lecture would have been one half hours, not 15 minutes, OK? Because I would go deep, deep, deep into the academic revolution that is happening. And you are listening, and probably, or falling asleep or listening, one of the, the two, but not using your laptops or, or smartphones. Um, this is a joke, I don't know if you can read it, but this is a nice one. Uh, the mother is saying to the, or the teacher maybe, is saying to the kid, it's called reading. It's how people install new software into their brains. Um, the second thing is that we used to have a model where there was someone with the knowledge, it was the sage, and he was going to the stage and giving the knowledge to the ignorant people who, does, who don't share his access to knowledge, because he went through all the process, he acquired knowledge. He, uh, 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 this go backwards, right? Ten minutes, not yeah. Uh, okay, so we had the model of the sage on the stage, uh, standing there and giving the knowledge that he has. But today, the real sage is the internet, because you go, you can go online, and everything is there in many in many levels. So we have Wikipedia. Uh, which is like low level. It's not low level in terms of accuracy because there is research that shows that the, the frequency of errors in Wikipedia 
is not higher than the frequency of errors in Britannica, which is written by experts, okay? So there is no problem with Wikipedia. I, I, I only say it's low level information because it's encyclopedia. It's not academic research and stuff like that. But you can also get access to academic research. You can use Google and, and, and find anything that you want. Or you can go to all kinds of specific solutions like this guy. This is Salman Khan. You may, you may know, not, not know his picture, but you probably know his solution. He has what is called Khan Academy, uh, a free uh, website platform with thousands or even tens of thousands of video lectures, high quality. In some cases, they are translated to more languages because it started in English. And it's just amazing. So you don't need the sage, the sage on the stage because you have the real sages all over the internet. The third reason is that degrees, academic degrees, are not enough. So starting from ancient China, I don't know if you know that or not, people could use academic uh, uh, degrees in order to move upwards in, the, uh, uh, in society or for social uh, mobility. Uh, in China, for example, if you took one test, which is equivalent to BA, you could get a position in your hometown. If you did another one and succeeded, you could get a position in the district. And if you did the third one, which is like a PhD, you could get actually be a, uh, in the government and be an officer or something like that. But today, this is not enough. So this young lady here, this one, her name is uh, Anna Alberta. I hope I, I'm saying her, uh, I'm pronouncing her name correctly. So she, she just sued her uh, 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 university, uh, San Diego University uh, Law School, for not finding a job after graduating from law school, even though they said they have like 70% or 80% of w or whatever of people getting hired after, graduate, after graduation. So in the, in the old world, if you had a degree, it was enough. So these are the three main reasons for change that I, I wanted to mention. Of course, there are dozens of other reasons, but these are the three I wanted to focus on. Now I want to say a few words about uh, how higher education is actually changing. Okay, so again, I'm not going to mention all the ways, but just a few main ones. So first, we're, we're uh, introducing new teaching methods. So one of the most uh, famous teaching methods, it, it's what we call the flipped classroom. And the flipped classroom goes like that. So this is the traditional classroom when you ha where you have the lecturer, the teacher, giving the, 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 the students the knowledge. And then they go home and they practice, okay? So practice is at home and teaching is in the classroom because he, he is the, the sage, he has the knowledge. But the flipped classroom uses a whole different model in which you study at home. So you have a video lecture or you have all the, uh, uh, some digital tools that you can use in order to get a uh, uh, high level education, high level learning experience at home. And then when you come to class, what you do is you do activities. So you do the, the, the practice and the activities in the class. And the teacher, he doesn't teach anything in the classroom. He's just a facilitator of the activities that go on in class. Okay, so usually today what we're doing is we're using a hybrid model. So we're doing both, some traditional and some flipped classrooms. Another thing that we're doing uh, or that is done is that new models are, are entering traditional academia. So for example, you may know Coursera. Coursera is a venture by Stanford University. And what they're doing is actually they're trying to, to uh, create a revolution in, in universities that is, is similar in a way to the revolution that was done by I, iTunes and Apple uh, to the music industry. Because one of the revolutions that was done there is breaking the albums into songs, okay? When I was a kid in the 70s, I used to buy albums because you couldn't buy just the songs that you like. But then came Apple with, with iTunes and they changed it. So they're changing academic education in a similar way because what they're doing is that they're offering courses and not full degrees. So people from all across the world can actually sign into this uh, uh, um, platform and take academic courses for free very high level courses from Ivy League universities and other top universities uh, around the world. And only if you want to get some certificate that you actually participated in the course, then you have to pay something, 40, 50, $100, something like that. And then you get the certificate. But the knowledge itself, you got for free, but it's not a degree. It's just the courses that you need or want. 
Yeah, of course, of course. The model is more sophisticated than that, but in 15 minutes, I'm just giving the general uh, idea. Another thing is that uh, all kinds of new organizations or non-university universities are emerging. So, for example, this uh, lovely lady, Alisa, uh, Ma I hope this is Matsanyuk, she was here yesterday on campus. I met her. And she's created something that is called the Green Garage. And the Green Garage is a place where hackers, and she calls them makers, can go there, both learn and create all, all kinds of, of, of uh, uh, um, physical stuff. OK? So, uh, so this is not a university. You're not doing it for a degree, but you can learn a lot. In some cases, not less than what you, what you learn in the university. Or you may know Singularity University, which, also, which is also not a university, but still tries to give people knowledge, network, access to understanding challenges and big problems, and so on. Uh, another thing is that new universities, actual universities, ones that give degrees or uh, uh, are, are, are able to give degrees, are emerging. So this one, this is a picture from Minerva University. Minerva is a new model in the States in which actually there, is, there are no lectures whatsoever. You only get the content, you only learn this way in a video conference with a teacher that in most cases is not there with you, is in a different continent or a different country. So they go all over the world, I think uh, three or four different places around the world to take their studies. And the whole, this, all the students, they, they stay uh, in the same building, they live there, they do the learning in the morning this way, and then they meet in the afternoon to do some activities and work together in teamwork. But this is a whole new concept that uh, was just introduced. I met one of the founders a few, a few months ago, and they're doing crazy stuff. Uh, I would end. I have three minutes left. I hope it will be enough uh, uh, to talk about IDC, uh, uh, IDC's role in the revolution that is taking place here in Israel. And uh, actually, what, what we what I think what I believe is that we're not just part of the revolution, but we're actually leading it. So the first thing is that all the advanced teaching methods that I've introduced are uh, taking place here. And not only that they're taking place, they're being led by the leaders of this campus. So for example, this is uh, Mario Mikolinser. He's our provost. And uh, so he is the top academic uh, 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 person on campus. And uh, in in many places, um, the, um, the more, let's say, the high ranked, and in some cases, they're even older in age, professors, so they oppose this change, okay? They want to teach the traditional way. They want to do things as they've been doing them for the past decade, a few decades. But here in IDC, the opposite happens. So Mario and, and, and our president, Professor Eichmann, they're actually leading the uh, revolution, and they're pushing us, all the other lecturers, uh, and to, 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 to adapt and to take these new uh, methods. The second thing is that we do a lot of learning by doing. So for example, this is a picture from an event that took place here two months ago of a course in which we, we allow students to take a course working inside startups, actual startups, doing real work, and actually doing training uh, uh, in the startup instead of learning uh, uh, on campus or in uh, classrooms. Uh, so over uh, 100 companies already participated in this uh, program and a few hundred uh, uh, students and it's going very well and this is exactly what we call learning by doing. They're not getting any money for it, only academic, uh, um, academic credit. Another thing is that we work closely with the industry and we actually bring them to the campus, to our classes, to be part of the learning and teaching experience. So for example, here are a few pictures from the last two years so you can see my students here visiting Wix and getting a, actually a, a lecture by an expert, but an expert from the industry and not an expert from the academia. Here we met, uh, uh, we went to Scodex. This is an um, Israeli startup that manufactures some kind of a new printer. And we also bring them to the campus. So here you can see this guy is on Enso from Intel. is leading there the IoT or Cognitive Computing Division. We, he came here to, to open the, the, the one of our courses. Uh, here, this guy is Daniel Pomerantz. He's the guy who brought uh, Playboy to Israel, the Hebrew Playboy. And he was here just last, um, uh, last week. Not that educational, but if you could ignore some of the picture, like this one of Natalie the Don that he showed. Um, um, so the content was very inspirational, also very uh, uh, important. 
another thing, I have six seconds. You'll give me one more minute. Yeah. So another thing is that we're using top-down and bottom-up approach in which, for example, this entire beautiful event is being organized and led by students and not by faculty or administration. So we have the good people from the students, uh, uh, the entrepreneurship uh, club that is entirely uh, uh, run by students. And uh, Oran was part of uh, this uh, student club. Now Emai is leading it. And they're doing an excellent job. And it's very, very important because it's part of their education. Because uh, you know that creating such an event is also an educational experience for them. Not only the content, but actually the, 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 the creation of the event. Uh, so we think that everything that I've just mentioned uh, actually works in its best when we're talking about entrepreneurial education. Because we have many uh, entrepreneurial programs. We're now building our new school, the Adelson School of Entrepreneurship, the first in Israel and one of the first in the world. And if you think of it, creating a startup or a new venture while still in, in, in school, while, while still in, uh, in university, actually combines everything that I've just men mentioned. You, uh, advanced teaching method, learning by doing, work closely with the industry, but there is an, ad an additional component, which is we teach our students to be active, okay? To take their, their future and their, their, uh, their destiny in their own hands and not just wait for someone to hire them or, or, uh, uh, or do the, the, the job for them. So we hope we'll not get sued in the future. Um, and the last thing that I want to end with is this, is this one. And I want you to go online and look for it because I don't have time to give you the information. This is another example of how uh, the leading people in this campus, like Professor Eichmann and the others, are pushing us to our limits. We've just uh, uh, in, uh, announced a new program, a new uh, entrepre entrepreneurial program, a one-year program for leadership and global impact, which is one of a kind globally. And uh, I encourage you to, to take a look and see what's going on there. It's part of the revolution that we're trying to lead. Okay, thank you.